Very good morning for those that uh, are just joining us. Uh, right here, we shall be joined on Zoom by one of our panelists. And I was trying to get to terms with the, the technology that shall be enabling that uh, particular interview to go ahead. And as we do, of course, we're going to be discussing the latest crisis within the health sector. And here you are, I'm on to it. Understanding the ongoing doctor's strike, why health workers are always unhappy. Interesting. That's a cloud of gloom on a sector that is very, very important to public health in uh, the country. My guest in studio is Dr. Mark Muyanga, a senior house officer at Molago National Referral Hospital. And of course, uh, via Zoom, we shall be joined by Elena Kembabazi, a program manager at the NGO ISA. Allow me to welcome Dr. Mark Muganga, who shall be giving us a preamble on exactly what the latest crisis in our health sector is. Good morning, doctor. Uh, good morning. How are you? Um, I'm fair. You're fair. I'm fair. I understand why you are fair. Yeah. I hope in uh, the workings of the government, the health sector, and the doctors, you will soon be very fine. It's our prayer. Bring us up to speed with uh, the latest deadlock that has seen uh, senior house officers uh, threaten to plunge the country into its latest public health crisis um, uh, thank you so much for hosting me mm. and I'm sorry for being uh, very blunt but mm. we must be uh, but I would like to re renounce the statement you've meant you've oh, made sure. that we are trying to plunge the country into that is what the government sees that's what yes, the government sees no, that's what they want to see, it seems. Uh -huh. uh, however, uh, back to what you asked about. Mm. Uh, first of all, I would like to tell our viewers quickly about who a senior house officer is. Oh, no doubt. Please. Um, a senior house officer is uh, a fully qualified uh, medical doctor. Mm. The implication is you went to medical school. Uh, yes. Have your two uh, bachelors, that is a bachelor of medicine and a bachelor of surgery. And thereafter, you underwent internship. Yeah. And um, after the one-year internship, you were fully licensed by the Uganda Medical and Dental Practitioners As a practitioner. Council. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, you again decide to go back to add more skills or to specialize in a particular field. Mm -hmm. So you either do a master's or you do a fellowship. Mm -hmm. So if I'm treating children, I become a pediatrician. If I'm treating uh, issues related to ladies, I become uh, an obstetrician and gynecologist. Okay. Yes, if I'm do doing simply surgeries, I become a general surgeon, mm. and so on and so forth. Yes. So uh, back to where this problem started from. Mm. Uh, way back in uh, October is when we last received any allowance as senior house officers. Uh, in December of last year, we mm. reached out to... Uh, the pertinent officers, uh, or the important officers mm. in Ministry of Health, that is the Office of the Commissioner of Clinical Services, mm. uh, the DGS, and the uh, Permanent Secretary. And uh, we wrote several letters. However, we were not responded to. Mm. Uh, in January and on January 18th, we can share with you the letters if you want. No, please. We wrote yeah. once again, mm. and uh, still we got no response. So we, de we decided to go, let me say, analog. That is calling and uh, uh, going unofficial, that is texting. Okay. But still, we were not responded to. So the last bit is uh, last week, but one. Mm. We decided to physically go to the Ministry of Health to face these people because as leaders, we were under a lot of pressure mm. from the people we are leading. Before you go any further, just let's be very categorical on this. In my world or sector, an allowance is different uh, from uh, the known amount of money that I receive for the yeah. kind of work the that salary. I do, which is either salary or a stipend, whichever way yes. anybody seeks to uh, call it. So what is the bone of contention here, allowances or salary? 
senior house officers don't receive salaries. Okay. It's no. an allowance. It's an allowance. It's an allowance. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And that's what we survive. There you have it. Information coming through. And why should a senior house officer, given all the specialization, two bachelors, and then specialization after that, is not entitled to a salary but an allowance? Uh, that's the way the system runs. And partially the... This must be huge the, allowances. The, the rationale behind that or what they say is because we are still studying as well. You've but done remember, two bachelors, you've yes, done internship, yes. you've gone for fellowship or even specialized and yes. you're still studying? I'm offering services but while mastering. While mastering. Wow. However, mm -hmm. in other countries actually, they receive an allowance. Not an allowance, but a salary. A salary. And it is something we had suggested. Mm. That since, as you've also said, we are already fully qualified doctors. Mm. And we are now simply specializing. We are supposed to be basing on the system of other countries. In other words, as you are specializing, you are working. Yes. The dispensation right now does not allow for one to simply concentrate on the specialization and then after that you can come and do the work that you ought to do. You, you know I think I need to uh, point out for, to you uh, please do. the life of uh, or the day of mm. a senior house officer. Yeah. Um, typically yeah. you wake up at, um, at 6 mm -hmm. do your ward round at 6 a.m. Mm. then after the ward round you either go to special clinics or you proceed and go for lectures. Then in the evening at six, you again have to do evening ward rounds because uh, the condition of a patient can change at any time mm. during the day. That's right. Then you may find yourself after that wo evening ward round at six that you are supposed to be on call mm. at night mm. because patients usually decompensate at night. Mm. So there are times you find yourself working 24 hours that's and right. then you find the following day again when you have to repeat the routine, you may not work at night, but you have to work the entire day and study. A senior house officer mm. not only does that, mm. but is in charge of teaching medical interns. Mm. A senior house officer is in charge of guiding other lower cadre medical personnel on mm. wards. Is in charge of teaching medical students. All that is work we are doing. Mm -hmm. So we are educating, we are working, and at the same time we are gaining One skills. thing I gather from this whole scenario is that what is needed is a reform of the working relationship, or rather the nature of uh, understanding between SHOs and the either the medical council or the ministry and all the stakeholders that are responsible. You should be fighting for reforms and not striking over allowances. The reforms could be as simple as ensuring that it is changed from receipt of allowance to being entitled to a salary. Um, before we go that far, yeah. allow me to point out that senior house officers are responsible people. No, I haven't, we are, we haven't are married people. I haven't suggested that. We otherwise. have children yeah. and we need to survive. So before we go to the issue of reforms, mm. can we receive what is currently approved? In 2016, when we met the president of mm. the Republic of Uganda, That's right. and informed him about all the work we were putting in as senior house officers and getting nothing, mm. he referred to that act as modern day slavery and ordered that we receive an allowance. In other words, the directive hasn't been put into... In 2021 is when we sat with Dr. Chris Bariomusi. Mm. Uh, it, it was at Imperial Royal and signed an MOU stating that senior house officers will be receiving an allowance that of 2.5 million shillings every month, which gets heavily taxed, and you end up with about 1.8 million shillings. shillings. But imagine we have children, we have wives, we have parents and grandparents to look after. We have rent to pay. And since October, we have got nothing. You also have husbands 
usually when people say how <laughs> wives it begins to look like the women the doctors are also women no doubt about that and they have husbands that completely changes the flip of the conversation but earlier as i was beginning the show i was flipping through uh, the phone here and uh, i was trying to ensure that we get in touch with uh, elana kembabazi who is a programs manager at isa cause she was running late because of the vagaries of our traffic system within kampala however we are delighted that she's been able to make it to the studio a very warm welcome Elana how are you doing good thank you um, and sorry about earlier it was actually water cutting off a part of the road oh sorry about that which, it's, which a is a it's a heavy down it's a heavy down pour there infrastructure mm. and why we are still in this situation in this era mm. but um, it was also very good for me to to hear the lived realities of HS because HS, I don't think many people no, mm. that first of all you're not interns <laughs> and that you know that you're going yeah. ahead and training the interns and you run the system we have seen this mm. we were seeing the pictures from Mulago this week and, and, and those of us who use particularly public health facilities are aware of the central role that you play and I for one I'm just tired of health workers perpetually striking I mean someone has got to we cannot live in this state it's, mm. it's a bit of a failed state you got COVID-19. You realize the health system is the most important. The health workers, while well, we stayed home and kept ourselves safe, were laying their lives on the line. And then again and again and again, it's a different. St at some point, you're like, which ones are striking now? But why are we like this? Yes. And then he talks about mm -hmm. um, the MOU signed with Barrio Monsi. My head, I'm like, but where's, where's the Minister of Health in this discussion? Why is there an MOU? It's, 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 it's things that are sort of done. The president is giving this directive. The ministry is not budgeting for it. You're having discussions by your CFC. I'm still trying to understand why. Um, the Ministry of Health is quiet. Even now, I was trying to go through and see, has the ministry like come out in a real way to explain to mm. us, the public, because we're stakeholders in this. Yeah. It is our patients who are not getting treated. It is our monies that get paid. If they decide to go ahead and pay you, it is our money, our taxpayers' money yes. that goes there. And no one is coming out to really explain. We're in a budget process. And we were last year. So I was trying to go back to the budget last year. Was it budgeted for? It wasn't clear. Okay. You know, last year, we, we noticed that a lot of money was given to... Um, the, so again, the health workers, yeah, and we applauded government improvements for that. in uh, salary. Exactly, yeah. and as Isa and other organizations were like, we applaud government for that. People have been striking. I think it was 400. I, I had my figures mm. before me, but then you then realize this very important group is saying they have not been catered for. They have not been paid money since October, which is a long time. I mean, it's a cost of living crisis. Mm. And the fact that we even had Ebola. So it's really just adding, adding so the wounds. Let's allow I want to understand what Dr. Miyanga to take us through the specifics of the memorandum of understanding that was signed with Dr. Bariomosi at the time, who was then Minister for Health. What was that memorandum of understanding? And give us the preamble to it, and then how... Well, apart from the fact that you haven't been paid, what other aspects haven't been attended to? Um, prior to the, stand, to the signing of that MOU mm. in 2021, if you yeah. remember, there was a countrywide uh, strike of doctors. Mm. And uh, Uganda Medical now Association... that one covered all doctors, all, all medical workers. But it started with interns, with actually. Interns, yeah. Then eventually, all doctors joined. Mm. Yes. Um, following that, mm. because they had not adhered to the directives of the president, because mm -hmm. he had directed that uh, doctors, a medical officer, should be receiving five million shillings, mm. and an intern should be receiving, uh, receiving half of that, mm -hmm. which they hadn't adhered to, yeah. and so there was a strike. And at Imperial Re Royal is where uh, the meeting sat. There was Uganda Medical Association, mm -hmm. Federation of Uganda Medical Interns, mm -hmm. the representatives of senior house officers, and Dr. Chris Bariomos, who is the minister for ICT, but mm. came up to uh, moderate because we were having mm. issues of mistrust with our mother ministry, Minister of Health. And they was, he was <laughs> sent particularly to moderate in that process. Yeah. We agreed that we would be receiving two point, an allowance, not a salary, mm. of 2.5 million shillings, and it has been coming since then. Mm. However, there have been instances where this money doesn't is released from Ministry of Finance but doesn't receive the doesn't intended recipients. Mbarara University uh, senior house officers last year 
who are currently in second year, mm. spent six months without receiving an allowance and started being paid after the seventh month. When they were paid they've on the never got month, that money. Did they get the arrears? They've never got that, the six months. But this money was released. The other house officers missed three months and started being paid in the fourth month. <coughs> they've never received this money. Now, fast forward to our situation, mm -hmm. October, November, December, January, February is ending. February is effectively ending tomorrow. We have got nothing. Landlords are calling us. Our kids are not going to school. And you wake up and claim to be a doctor. Elana yeah. Kembabazi, Aiza has uh, put itself at the forefront of uh, ensuring that some of these ills mm -hmm. within our public health sector are brought to light, but also done a lot of work in ensuring that the powers that be actually are put to book when it comes to either rolling out the reforms or even basically uh, being able to meet their part of the bargain when such memoranda are signed between government and health workers. In your follow-up mechanism, what do you do and how far are we when it comes to ensuring that some of these agreements, not only with SHOs, but also interns and other uh, public service workers, is going? Yeah, I think a lot of what we do is around budget advocacy and, mm. and monitoring because, again, yeah, there's the budget issues, yeah. right? Uh, on the one hand, we talk a lot about where government should get the money because government does need money, especially now with and all the prices sensitivities. It also has money, but it does need more. So we always talk a lot about the need for progressive taxation and all of that. Yeah. Uh, but number two, more importantly, we look at the budget. Mm. Where is money being allocated? And one of our key asks has always been that the public health system yes. must be prioritized. I mean, you post others have done surveys, and they will show you. Mm. Ugandans go to the public health system. It's the one place you run to. You may think because you're wealthy, you don't need it, but COVID showed us you're one medical bill away. <laughs> from poverty, you will end up with a public health system in whatever state it is. And that is run by healthcare workers. And so looking from a budget perspective, that's why I asked at the beginning, looking from a budget perspective, mm. you're not seeing this reflected. So they're playing a smokes and mirrors game mm. where it looks like, yay, we are putting more money for health workers. But actually, no, there's a group. And the second bit about it that is troubling are these things that are done a bit uh, outside the system. So I'm here in Bariomunsi because yes. of mistrust mistrust or not, the MOU should be between the government of Uganda and you all, right? Um, but also mistrust or not, the Minister of Health <laughs> should be there uh, because at the end of the day, your health workers, you're under that docket mm -hmm. and they are the ones that are supposed to really manage the health of this country. And also from a sustainability perspective, for the budgeting to happen, they must be budgeting for your allowances within their budget. So the budget framework paper, the ministerial policy statements. I know that now we're about to be heading into ministerial policy statements, so this is something we continue to look yeah. after. My challenge, though, is that um, the country is held hostage when these things happen because of poor planning by government, that people wake up one day and they can't get services. Because you can't say they are wrong to strike. Even you, if you are not getting allowances, you have a family, you're working, all the, and they work long hours. They work multiple shifts sometimes. Yeah. And then the country, so this, 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 this haphazard system of health governance, and I really, I mean, it's governance, but particularly in the health sector, and the failure to actually plan and budget means that people die. I mean, the people who need to get health care, who are not getting health care. There are, like, real repercussions here. So for us, as, as Aida, this is definitely a very serious issue for us. Um, and it may be that as we, we are continuing to monitor, I know you're in your second week of your strike, right? And, and, and to sort of see where these discussions are ending, and we'd love to see also the MOU in particular that set this out, because we have to think about uh, more permanent solutions. It cannot be, you know, just by MOU, just by directive, just, yeah. I, this just can't be happening, because we also know that there's a shortage of healthcare workers in this country, and that's the thing that I think everyone forgets. People are not running, putting up their hands, please let me be a healthcare worker, I mean, yeah. and one of the, I, I looked at their letter, one of the demands they have is not just about their, their allowance, I mean, that has dominated. Mm -hmm. 
But one of the demands that I thought was not worthy was they want supplies, they want things in the public health facilities. Yeah. They don't want to come and they are just, you know, you're, you're just, you're, you're hiring. That's right. And that's a key demand that the public is forgetting. Mm -hmm. And that has been a thing that we know. One of the demands is NMS, we need these things in public sure. health facilities. And we have been seeing these stockouts. We have gotten so used to them. The question I have for government and the public, mm -hmm. why have we resigned our people to such poor health care in the public health system? Are they not lives that are worth living in dignity? Do you think you will not use the public health system? Before we discuss the latest when it comes to how far government is responding to the industrial action. Mm. Just, Dr. Mark Moyanja, I want you to take us through the workings of the uh, health infrastructure. The other day we were listening to an official from either the Medical Association, I forget the name, as he was interfacing with members of parliament and discussing this whole issue. And he spoke about the lack of tools, including switches when attending to mm. a patient basically that even some doctors at one point have to get the hands into their own pockets because of the sheer uh, predicament one patient can be in unable to even afford a tool that is as cheap as 5,000 Uganda shillings when a hospital like Chirudu Kawempe mm. or even Mulago given its complex nature is operating yeah. on a daily Tell me or take us through what the doctor goes through when it comes to, for example, heading into the operating theater. Um, Be yeah. honest. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've been there. The first thing is uh, you need basics. You need to protect yourself before mm. you handle any patient. That is, you need scrubs. These are things which at times are so rare. You find a doctor putting on rugs instead of scrubs when going to the theater. Mm. The second issue is the materials you need to use on the patient. Mm. And the most frustrating thing is usually absence of basics, such a material, such yeah. as a, you can get such as at 1,000 shillings, 1,000. Mm. But um, you know these conditions don't wait for you to have money before they, they land on you. Sure. Anytime you can get a problem, you can get obstructed labor. Mm. You had gone to maybe a traditional bath attendant and you get obstructed labor, they bring you and you have no coin. Mm. And the bad thing is they come in weird hours. Someone comes at three yeah, at yeah. night mm -hmm. and there are no sutures. Pharmacies are closed within the town or where you where are. Where somebody can run quickly. So you have to like run things. around and look for these sutures, call colleagues, wake up pharmacists and do all that. But ultimately it comes down to what we talked about, mm. where we requested that Minister of Health and Minister of Finance together with Parliament work together mm. to try to pass a supplementary because National Medical Stores reported that they were out of supplies and this is something which happens a lot. Mm. You know, there are so many times the public chooses doctors or medical uh, or health workers mm. of stealing drugs. Mm. But you cannot steal what is not there. <laughs> but sometimes <laughs> you steal. <That's> <laughs> there are some who steal. That's interesting. But it's interesting. We hear those stories, of course. <laughs> I don't know whether it's a, se a particular set of uh, uh, drugs and tools that are predominantly stolen than others. We have always got reports mm. where stockouts are reported. Yes. Right from the level of national medical stores. Mm. Because even what it provides is sufficient. Mm. So when people rise up and say we steal drugs, now why, what would I use such as of 1,000 shillings for? No, when you get and how will I <laughs> they're really huge. Mm. Yeah. A container of switches can uh, build a house. If they were there, fine. So but how can I steal <laughs> what is inexistent in the first place? There. All right, so that is a very gloomy picture of uh, what happens on a daily. Can I just come in? Uh, please do. He talked a bit about, like, we asked him for a supplementary budget. And again, I keep coming back to poor planning. Mm. He put supplementary that's supposed to be unforeseeable. I mean, look at the Public Finance Management Act. It has clear things about what supplementary is when you bring a supplementary. That's right. So you know you have health facilities. You know the health workers there. You know they should be equipped with these basics. Why do you wait until supplementary? Why do you have certain things and funded priorities? Mm. These, again, are issues. And I'm bringing them up now because we're in a budget cycle. So members of parliament, please pay attention. Mm. We're not going to sit as Ugandans for another year 
and be like the healthcare workers they're now striking i don't know there is nothing in the in the they're not such as they are no there's no what is the next course of action no. for the civil society one no, not just civil society actually the biggest stake here for me the people i need to be discussing to the floor of parliament are members of parliament that's right they are our voice as people now let's forget us as civil society mm. we came in to supplement and advocate and bring out the failures but now you see the failures the failures are there they have been documented Every budget analysis AISA has ever done, and most of us that has pointed out a number of these issues. Mm. Now we're in a budget process. For one, I need them to be addressed in this budget process. But two, we also need members of parliament to bring the minister should come and give us a proper statement. What are you doing on this? I haven't seen it. It may be out there. Uh, yeah. But what are you doing on this mm -hmm. to resolve this strike? Because we're not going to stay in strike mode. We have patients that need health care. Doctor has something. Yeah, I, I wanted to point out something. Yeah. It's that recently the Minister of, the Minister of Health came up and said that the reason why they are unable to get our allowances is because our numbers have increased. Mm. And I would like to interest you in the fact that the current second year students are 260 in number. That is at uh, 260. Uh, the senior house officers all over the country. All over the country. In second year are 260. That's across all medical schools? Yes. Okay. They are 260. Mm -hmm. And remember, this is a recurrent expenditure. The current first year senior house officers are 245, rather 247. Mm. If you had planned for 260 new senior house officers, I wonder how you can rise up and say 247 senior house officers are too many for us to pay. It doesn't add up. You have, of course, uh, studied, and uh, I can presume, and uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, that you have uh, acquainted yourself with what happens in other countries and how the f structure there appreciates in terms of uh, the rollout of allowances including salary to senior house officers paint us a picture of how it is so that we can actually understand <laughs> what the house officer in south africa for example where most of our doctors are going and even nearby kenya do get for the kind of work they do our system is modeled after the system of uh, great britain mm -hmm. and partially guided by the u.s system Mm. A senior resident or senior house officer in the U.S. starts with $50,000. And it is increased every year okay. by $5,000 mm. until they finish. Every year? Every year. In other words, you're assured of that yes. increment? Yes. Okay. In England, it mm. goes to uh, at about still $50,000. Let me be doing the math here. Dollars. Mm. Per month. Yep. And still with each year, it is what? It is increased because you are adding more value to the system. You are gaining more skills and doing more procedures, serving more people. You get? 50,000, that is annual salary. Is that the compu a computation? Yes. That annual. is 183 million equivalent, Vigana shillings. So annually, how much money do you make if the allowance was to be coming in? Hmm. Uh, smoothly? Uh, and you are 1.8 by 12 million shillings. Uh, I'm not so good at, at oh, this. 1.8? 1.8 by 12. But can I Ooh. come in? I, I don't please do has that. <laughs> I don't think that his, his rationale is we, we want 50,000 dollars. So, <laughs> so I don't think yes. his rationale is we want 50,000 dollars. It's but not. We don't want it's a different, it's a different uh, <laughs> scenario altogether. Sort of we have yeah. dif he, different he GDPs, sure. our economies what are different. Bring us up to speed with Kenya and South Africa. That is more, mm. um, it's kind of the I'm not so sure about us. the Kenyan system. Yeah. Yes, but the others get. But what pay. I know is in South Africa, actually. Well, they the reason I'm uh, intent mm. on that is that mm. many arguments are made by, for example, members of parliament who mm. say, when you look at our counterparts in Kenya, mm. in Rwanda, mm. yeah. and in South Africa, yeah. they get a lot more money than we do. So stop complaining about the fact that we want more money. So in asking you that question, okay. so we, a, the perspective a, can be well understood. A, a basic and embarrassing mm. thing I'll tell you yeah. is um, a medical intern in. Kenya here mm -hmm. gets five million shillings. A medical intern. Intern. Five million five. shillings. A That's senior house officer Uganda. in Uganda mm. is getting one point eight million shillings. That means an intern in Kenya is paid more than as an SHO in Uganda. Yes. Elada. 
So for me, like I've said, um, <laughs> and you know, with Kenya, they also say they do need oh. a bit more. I do think that, we, again, comes from what you prioritize and what you think is worth putting money in, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we see people, politicians, they'll go campaigning. They will yeah. spend so much money. And it's usually people don't think about it. Sometimes it's their money, but sometimes it's like if the president travels, it's, it's actually our money. The sticks are really high <laughs> it's there. taxpayers' money that, mm -hmm. that goes because it, there's a whole detail that has to go with him. And you look at how we are paying our healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. And we can agree on one thing our healthcare workers are underpaid. We don't even have to make a comparison to other mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. And if we did, we would even realize how much more they underpaid. And that is why they are, they've tried to leave those who can. And I think, again, it's really about us failing to prioritize. I do, the fact that this strike mm -hmm. has gone on, and it's not, I mean, I think every time Parliament should hear there's a strike, they should be like, wait, I mean, I didn't we resolve this, bring the person. Mm -hmm. Apathy. You know, okay. um, and, and the same thing as well with the, with the ministry and with the governments. Mm. If you have a minister of health, if he's saying that they couldn't even sit with the minister of health, that sh really shocked me. And they they had to deal with ICT. The that just shows again that 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 no, the lack of <laughs> prioritizing and saying we need these people because the truth is, every government official watching now. As Ugandans, we need health officers. You're not going to magically produce a health workforce in one day because, oh, sorry, these ones are on strike. I bring in troops. Uh, if you have an idea of how to do that, you should already be doing that because there are people not getting health care right now. Oh, okay. You need them. So for a sustainable public health system, Doctor, you need to have what have you been promised paid. by the government? I'm sure they received the letter. Has there been any feedback? And if there has been, what is that feedback? Can you share with us? From the meeting we had in Parliament on Wednesday, where I was uh, part, uh, the chairperson of the health uh, committee mm -hmm. had agreed and promised that uh, we would have a tripartite meeting between Ministry of Health mm. and Ministry of Finance. Okay. To date, we've not got any feedback. On that? We've not got any feedback. Also, when is this table on the floor, Parliament? I mean, beyond beyond your sort of negotiation, as, as the public, we, you know, I think people forget we are a stakeholder in this. Mm. It is our people that are not getting health care. So when we when they come, they should come and present a statement on the floor. First, someone should be asking for it. So that it, it is it is the people, the public can know because we are watching this happening mm. in our hospitals in the news. I'm glad that I commend the chair for trying to, you know, convene you all, finance, health. But no, we need more. We need to be able to have a proper statement and not just make parliament, ideally to the public, about what is happening, mm. about how to make sure this does not happen. Our healthcare system is hit by these shocks. Mm. You, you begin to distrust the healthcare system because you're like, will I find a healthcare worker? Ah, they're striking. Pause, when is it? There are no health facilities. What then does our taxpayer do? Our tax monies do rather. Okay. What do we as taxpayers get from our tax monies? Mm -hmm. Because you're, going, you're coming for us to ask us for tax. That's right. And there's a cost of living crisis. So the only way you're cautioning the people right now mm -hmm. is to make sure we have public services, quality public services, quality public health care. The plight of health care workers is a very important pillar mm -hmm. of the quality public health care. All right. Time is not our best ally. And I will allow Dr. Moyanja to do a wrap. At what point are you willing to halt the industrial action? And... Uh, Usually, we all belong to a country whose workings we know. If uh, you met the president uh, today or tomorrow, what is it that you're willing to take and what you're not willing to take? Um, as senior house officers, our stand is humble and simple. Mm. As long as our arrears are paid. Yep. And the necessary services or facilities or utilities are put in place mm -hmm. by national medical stores to make our work easy. We are more than willing to go back and serve because we get no delight from seeing our fellow countrymen suffering or dying. Mm -hmm. However, even as humans as well, we have families to look after. We have bills to pay. We have rent to pay. We have fuel to put in vehicles for the few who have them anyway. Mm. So let that issue be handled. And we shall go back to work at any time. But for now, we are honestly not in the right condition, mm. physically, mentally, and socially, is, uh, to handle the, Ugandans. Is the Uganda Medical Association in on this particular 
industrial uh, The Uganda Medical Association led by Dr. Edith Naku has been very supportive, very supportive, and we would like to thank them so much for what they've done so far. Okay. They've also made the same recommendations. Mm. And I would like to interest you in the fact that Parliament noted that this money had actually been released. In other words, there is somebody who is not or who has held on to this money and has perhaps put it into real estate so it can make some So more we are wondering who needs our money more than us. Yeah. The other thing is, which the minister talked about, mm. where uh, they said that they don't have money. Okay. The same committee said there is money. And that is why if you read the new vision of Saturday, they, they even want 191 billion shillings mm. for allowances and cars. It's because they know there is, money. there is money. Senior house officers need a total of 24 billion shillings for a whole year to do All this. Right. That is pocket change. Elana Kimbabazi, your last words on this. Um, two things. One, health is not a political favor. The fact that you even have to go to the president. These are not political favors. They are rights. Mm -hmm. And rights require resources. And two, it's a budget process. I hope we don't get to see this process happening again. But also, as the country, whenever they say they don't have money, we have to think about how the financing of this country has been happening. We have a, we have a budget. We, we, we spend more on debt repayment than mm. we spend on health care <laughs> or education. So this, I think this strike shows you how this trickles down to the regular folk. Like, you will not get health care if your health workers are not paid. That's you right. will not get health care if you don't have commodities in public health facilities. So we need our politicians. We need our members of parliament and our people to understand you must budget for a quality, and I keep emphasizing quality public health system. You're not going to just throw us whatever you can get. All oh, healthcare workers are striking, customer can go to private. Mm -hmm. No, we need a quality public health system. So we need to see the resources, and through we need this issue discussed on the floor of parliament as soon as possible. As Ugandans, mm. we also want answers. We're tired of all this striking. All right. Lana Kembabazi, program officer at uh, AISA, and Dr. Mark Muyanjo, a senior house officer at Malago. Many thanks for making it and, of course, uh, uh, giving us uh, perspective on the plight of uh, these particular.